Hi guys, happy April. I'm here to share some cosmic wisdom for you guys for the month of April, um, for your personal reflection and growth and alignment with what's happening in the universe around us. Um, so when we enter April, um, for the first nine days of April, April 1st to the 9th, Mars and Saturn will be in a conjunction with each other in Aquarius within three degrees. Um, so what does that mean? Mars is all about action. And Mars is actually the ruler of Aries. We are in Aries season. We talked about this last month. Aries is fire. It is cardinal fire energy, starting something, beginning something. Spring is happening with the equinox. We're reawakening to our own desires, our own passions, our own life force and energy, this will to make something happen. Um, so Mars gives us great energy to do that. It's intention um, and the energy to push you know, through towards whatever we're looking to accomplish our goals. With Saturn, that's actually really nice because Saturn is, whereas Mars is very rash and jumps in and is kind of like, let's go, let's get this going. It can be really impulsive and impatient. Saturn is the opposite. Saturn is very, it's also cardinal energy, cardinal earth. So it also wants to begin something, but because it's earthy, it's about beginning something that it wants to commit to over a long period of time. I want to make sure there's a good foundation and structure. I want to make sure whatever I'm building and working towards, it's solid. So I'm going to put a lot of intention and planning into the beginning of whatever I'm looking to create. So it's a really nice time when the two of them come together. Sometimes that's a signature. If you have a Mars Saturn conjunction in your natal chart, um, sometimes there's a little bit of a tension between that impulsive, you know, just want to get it done fast and that finding patience and creating structure to manifest over time. Um, it's also sometimes a signature of somebody who's kind of a workaholic. Like you've got big ambition big ambition, like you know your will, you know what you want to accomplish, you know what you want to win at, and you also have the will to commit to it and to create the structure, to execute it, you know, in the long term. So it's a really nice combination. I'm just going to ignore the, you know, kind of more ancient and medieval take on Mars, Saturn, which considered them to be malefic planets, like they could, you know, more dangerous or not so friendly to us in a chart. I think I don't really ascribe to that in a more modern humanistic understanding of, of, you know, how the astrology could be used. It's more like if we're not being very mindful and conscious of those energies, we can become overly egoic, overly, you know, committed to just getting our will, getting what we want, regardless of who we harm in the process. Um, I, I don't think that we have to be really overly worried about that if we're conscious and mindful. How do I apply my energy, my life force towards accomplishing something that brings my own authentic autonomy and will forward, but in a way that is um, also non-harming, you know, going back to ahimsa in the yogic tradition, like how do I be authentically living out my soul path, but without creating harm towards anyone else. And what I love about Aries season is that the full moon in Aries, when we're in Aries season, the full moon is always opposite that in Libra. And that full moon is always the beginning of Passover in the Jewish tradition, which is about liberation and freedom. But it's also about coming out of a place of being persecuted and enslaved into a wide open place of possibility. So the promise and the hope of that, and this year that full moon is happening on April 15th, 16th, it's also Good Friday and Easter is April 17th. So we have this energy of Libra full moon in the airy season, which is about how do I apply my own will and exert my own courage and strength and you know, confidence in the world, but in a way that creates more freedom and justice and fairness, not just for myself, but for others, right? How do I bring that to fruition? That's the first half of April for you guys. Um, the long awaited conjunction of Jupiter Neptune that I've been talking about for the last six months, um, that's happening this whole month. This whole month, Jupiter and Neptune are conjunct in Pisces within three degrees of each other. Um, big sense of being open and receptive 
to a spiritual awakening, to spiritual practice, to a spiritual awareness that the world is way more than what I perceive just with my five senses or what I know logically with my mind, that there's a greater mystery, there's a greater unspeakable, you know, experience of truth that is guiding, you know, and pervading everything, that all things are pervaded by this incredible divine mystery, this consciousness of which I am a part and not separate. So I hope you've been working on your dreams, on your tarot stuff, on your visioning. Um, this month is another really good month to continue that work. Venus is entering Pisces as well on April 5th, and Mars is going to enter Pisces on April 15th, along with that full moon. So from April 15th through the end of the month, we have a stellium, a grouping of planets in Pisces, including that Jupiter, Neptune, Mars, and Venus. So what are my visions about awakening my own soul? And what do I value? And what do I think is beautiful and have an effect? or affinity for around that kind of spiritual practice. And then Mars is like, and where do I actually put myself in action around that? Um, so you've got that energy happening for you. And then Earth Day, well, the moon, sorry, the sun moves into Taurus, um, zero degrees of Taurus. This year that's happening on April 19th. Sometimes people ask me about being on the cusp of a sign. And when does it really start the end of Aries season, the beginning of Taurus season? It really depends on the year and where the sun is. Um, this year in New York Eastern time, um, the sun is moving into zero degrees of Taurus at 10, 24 p.m. So if you're born on April 19th before 10, 24 p.m., you would still be an Aries, 29th degree of Aries. But born after that, you would be a Taurus. Maybe you're an April 20th birthday and you're still an Aries in the year you were born. Um, so we're moving into Taurus season. Taurus is ruled by Venus. It's about the feminine. It's about everything earthy, sensual, what we can touch and taste and smell and, um, and feel. It's about beauty. Um, it is about the divine mother, the divine feminine, um, you know, the earth itself and all of her resources and how we interact with those resources and our own sense of what we have that gives us a sense of security in our lives on this earth. Do we have enough? Do we have abundance? Do we have scarcity? Um, and, you know, there's some stuff going on in the world right now that is a little frightening around scarcity. And we're hearing about food shortages and other things given war. And um, I will say that there's definitely some change coming and the eclipses are happening all of this year, which I'll speak about. The eclipses are happening in Taurus and Scorpio. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing a workshop on the North and South node and what that means for you personally in your chart as kind of karmic points, pointing to past life, past soul accumulated wisdom and what you've brought forth into this life and then what your purpose is in this life to take forward. What are you supposed to be learning and doing? It's really about your karma, your dharma. Um, I'll be doing a whole workshop on the North and South nodes. The reason I bring that up is because the eclipse cycle follows the North and South node. Um, and this year, the North node is in Taurus. So the learning lesson that we have as a collective on this planet is around Taurus. It's around our relationship to the earth and earth's resources. And are we protecting and defending and preserving the earth for you know perpetuity for our children? How do we relate to the earth in a way that is nonviolent and bringing justice? Um, so, and then the North Node, the South Node being in Scorpio um, is about breaking really looking at the past around our issues around power and wealth. That's very Scorpio. Um, so breaking those habits and patterns and awakening to something new in our relationship to our own personal resources, our own physical body, our health, what we have, our finances, our self-worth, 
what we value within ourselves, within others. Um, all of those are issues that are gonna be in the consciousness this year. And I would love for you to work on that with me in the workshop I'm offering. Um, the first eclipse is gonna be a partial solar eclipse on April 30th at the very end of our month. That's happening in 10 degrees of Taurus. So you might wanna check what you have around that 10 degree mark in any of the fixed signs, Taurus or Scorpio, um, Aquarius or Leo, because all of those are gonna be getting triggered if you have important placements there. And eclipses are very much about like a reset. It's like pulling the plug and letting everything kind of go offline and then resetting and firing back up again with an intention to do something new in a refreshed way. Um, what else do I have for you guys this month? Earth Day, I was gonna say is April 22nd. The moon is actually gonna be sitting right with Pluto on that day. Um, you know, Pluto is about power and the moon is the feminine and the intuitive. And it's about what we need, really what we need to feel safe and at home. So on Earth Day in Taurus, the moon in, and, you know, and Pluto together might be an invitation to stand in our own sense of power around our own resources, our own health, but also around having our needs be met um, and helping to meet the needs of our Mother Earth home. Um, you know, what can we do? What is our small part and contribution to, um, to really honoring, really honoring and celebrating um, the earth, which supports us all. So that's what I have for you guys this month. Um, I will add one last thing, which is if you are into the tarot, let me, let me just share some things real quickly for you here, just to look at. Um, okay. So Aries, the beginning of the month, we're still in Aries season. The tarot card associated with Aries is the emperor. The emperor is that very Mars driven energy of, I know my will, I am autonomous and I'm the authority. I make my own rules. I take my own direction, but it also has a sense of this power that comes hand in hand with responsibility. You know, there's a gracefulness of knowing that you are in the seat, in the throne of your own life and your own power and that your will matters makes something come to fruition and how are you graceful how are you going to play and use that you know you might see it's associated with the ram and here you see that she's holding a staff and there's a sheep in the background here we have this interesting um there's an eclipse happening <laughs> in this card and here the emperor is very feminine and is the tree you know that that tree um how do we caretake others with our power, right? So that it doesn't become selfish, it becomes a gift um, of our own self-expression for the greater good. So you might wanna play with any of these images, what calls to you, what are you drawn in by? Maybe you're drawn in by the chessboard, by the, you know, like what's my next move? That's very Emperor Aries. Maybe you're drawn in by this beautiful tree and you think, ah, it's a season of like, growing acorns and what's the potential in that seed that I'm going to drop to earth so that it can take root and grow the next thing, right? So you can play with that. And then towards the end of the month, when we move into Taurus, Taurus season um, in tarot is the Hierophant. Another word for the Hierophant is the, like the teacher, the mentor, uh, the one who downloads from this higher realm of wisdom of truth, that sudden lightning flash of awareness, and then holding the key to unlock some new understanding. You know, there's a sense of joy. I'm grounded on the earth, but I'm receiving, really receiving these kisses and these whispers of divine, you might notice feminine um, wisdom here. And it's showing me something and I'm bringing it into my heart right? Here, I'm like really joyful about sitting on this earth, but knowing that this earth is filled with divine presence. And how do I then live my life and actually manifest something and then teach that, you know, and offer that, um, that spiritual infusion and awareness to others through my daily living? Um, that's very much that Taurus card.
All right, you guys. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, you can check out my website if you want information on the workshop I'm going to be doing. It'll be at the end of April. Again, it's going to be about the North and South Node in your natal chart. Um, so what is your life mission and purpose? And what are the skills that you've already accumulated that you could be using? Um, and what are the sort of habits and patterns that you can fall back on, but maybe it's time to grow up and away from towards some new kind of skillfulness in your life. That's very North South node. And then of course, we'll look at patterns and cycles. 18 and a half years is the cycle of nodal returns. So different times in your life, when were you coming into a greater awareness of aligning with sort of your destiny of what you are supposed to be learning? We'll look at all of that together, as well as the Scorpio Taurus North South node and how that might be affecting us in our lives this year. All right, you guys have a fabulous April and I'll see you guys next month.